If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of trophies. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. cool drink, a warm day, and the shades are on. What's up my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro, the Mormon Entertainer here, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Ayrshire here today. It's Friday, the weekend is here, it's Scottish Grand National Weekend up here in Scotland, uh, well, uh, and in Air to be exact, because the Scottish Grand National takes place at Air Racecourse, so I'll, um, I'll more than likely see if I can uh, get a couple of winners uh, tomorrow, especially for the big one. Uh, but anyway, this is the Trophy Achievement Podcast. For those that are new to the channel, welcome. If you are here for the very first time, what we do here is we talk about the latest gaming news over the course of the last week. And of course, those points and trophies, hence the Trophy Achievement name. And it is for the points and uh, achievement score and the trophies, if you're on PlayStation, for the latest games. Talking of games, well, this through uh, uh, earlier in the week. Uh, actually, it just came through yesterday. In fact, the latest in my long line of rentals from uh, Boomerang Rentals, and let's see what they got today. Ha 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 ha! Ah yes, this is the appropriate time to cue the music. Dragon, dragon, rock the dragon, dragon ball Z. Well, Dragon Ball Fighters, Z to be exact. <laughs> well, Dragon Ball Fighters, Z, with a Z instead of an S. <laughs> That's the latest in my long line of rentals from Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as £3.99 a month. And this is for my UK fan base. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial, and you get three free, well, three free game rentals. And you get a 21 day free trial as well before your sus subscription starts. When you start up, when you sign up, choose the subscription uh, you want, and then you can play the latest games at a fraction of the price it would cost to buy them. Or you can keep the games forever. There are no late fees, and like I said, you can keep the games forever at a discounted price by buying them from the online store itself. But I'll tell you, it's a fantastic service. They've got a great range of games. They've got a great range of old games. And if you're one of, if, you, if you're part of the priority uh, subscription service, you can play the latest games when they come out on launch day. So, that's boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. So we've got some very tasty news this week. We've got news regarding uh, an update on uh, Pokemon, uh, on regarding Pokemon Go, and what uh, the rumours are regarding that. Uh, there's a Sonic Ages collection coming out. What could that mean? Um, and uh, the Netherlands have... The Netherlands Gaming Authority is cracking down on loot boxes in some games. Hmm. And this is obviously in response to the debacle that was Star Wars Scandal Front 2. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, I should say. So, Anyway, my point still stands. EA botched Battlefront 2 big time. If they ruin Anthem, I am never forgiving them again, and I am never playing their games again. Anyway, mm. uh, there are some new games coming to the Nintendo Switch, and they've been coming over the course of this week. Um, there's a Shenmue HD collection, and it's coming to Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Um, later this year, we're gonna have the official release date for that. And of course, in the signature points and trophies section, we, in honor of God of War, the new God of War game just came out today. 10 out of 10s across the board. And it is going to be the trophies for... I'm going to be running through the entire list. Yep, that's right. 
the entire list of trophies, secret trophies included, for the new God of War game that just came out today. So, all that is coming up, so let's get right into the news. But before that, it is time to hit our signature jingle, jingle, maestro! It's all love at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Thank you very much. We have, as always, we always have our gaming screw up of the week, but surprisingly, the week before my birthday, we didn't actually have a gaming screw up. But now we have two. And who are the two in question? Why, it's none other than my good friends at Electronic Arts. Note the sarcasm, they are never my friends, and they never will be. And of course, and of course, the difficulty spikes that only know shooters, otherwise known as Call of Duty Cash Cows, Activision. So, let's get the Activision out of the way first. And, oh my goodness me, apparently the new Black Ops game might not have a single player campaign at all! Oh my goodness me, and shock and surprise, it's gonna feature a Battle Royale mode. Oh my goodness me, that they're just that there just screams death wish this is a death warrant they have signed at this point call of duty is known for many things such as its massively popular fast-paced pvp multiplayer its incredibly profitable co-op zombies mode and perhaps what has usually been the foundation of the game it's summer blockbuster like single player mode featuring an featuring a six to eight hour gripping story filled with action. If rumours are to be believed, 2018's Call of Duty Black Ops 4 may be ditching the traditional campaign. And that in itself screams, Activision, have you officially lost your minds? There are people like myself who do not play this for the multiplayer. You are catering to the professional gaming scene only. It makes no sense to ditch the single player campaign considering you've had it in every single one of your games since the series started. Minus the 360 version of Black Ops 3, but my point still stands. Call of Duty will have single player campaigns until the series dies. You have wiped out your casual fan base who like the single player campaigns. And like I said, Call of Duty needs single player campaigns. Games like Overwatch and Fortnite Battle Royale and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. They work. They work being online only. Because that's... Because it is their... It is the first game in each of those series. And it works. And you expect people to... And this is what... Anyway. Yes, it seems Treyarch is parting ways with their typical epic mind-bending stories filled with conspiracies, twists, and fictional takes on major historical events. Why does that not surprise me? According to Polygon and Charlie Intel, Treyarch is ditching the single-player campaign this time around due to a lack of time. Due to a lack of time. You've had three years to make the damn game! You've had three years to make the game! And you claim there's not enough time! Don't give me that rubbish! Don't give me that nonsense! Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, Infinity. Uh, no. Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, and Treyarch. That's a three-year cycle. 
and you claim there's not enough time to put a single player campaign in. Don't give us that nonsense! You know damn well there is plenty of time. You have three years to make a game. That's unacceptable, Activision. Unacceptable. While unclear, it sounds like there may have been plans at one point, but the team wouldn't have been able to complete it before launching in October and had to scrap what they created. Simple. Move it to its usual November release date. Then we save all this trouble. This is one of the reasons why I don't see myself working in the game industry doing game development. Because this is the sort of thing that is inevitable that is inevitably gonna happen. And that's how you end up with buggy games that people will despise. <sighs> Polygon states in their report that they that they that Polygon states in their report that there will instead be a focus on cooperative modes as a potential stand-in for the typical single-player campaign experience. You've already got that with the zombies mode! Why do you need more? It's unclear if this is something separate from the, un from the expected zombies mode and the multi and multiplayer, but... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah team-based, uh, team-based multiplayer match modes. Okay. Anyway. It's unclear if this is something separate from the expected zombies mode in multiplayer, but it wouldn't be unexplored territory for the series. It wouldn't be unexplored territory. <sighs> it's basically a copy-paste formula, just with a different title. Treyarch had co-op campaigns in Call of Duty World of War and Black Ops 3. And they still had, but they still had fleshed out stories that could be played solo. Exactly! Why remove the campaign? It makes no sense to remove the campaign. One of the possible substitutions for the set piece heavy campaign is a battle royale mode in the vein of PUBG or Fortnite. Even Activision is on board the Battle Royale hype train. Charlie Intel is also reporting that Raven Software, a studio that has assisted de development on multiple Call of Duty games and headed development on Modern Warfare Remastered, as well as having a history of their own games such as 2009's Wolfenstein, is developing the mode for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. They didn't have any more details to share on the topic, but given PUBG and Fortnite are the two most popular games at the moment, it would make lots of sense for one of the biggest franchises, biggest game franchises of all time to try and cash in on the hype. And it's going to fail! Treyarch looks to be taking a new approach to the shooter series this time around with their marketing tagline, telling players to forget what you know. Perhaps that means ditching the campaign involving the involving the multiplayer with Battle Royale and likely much more. All will be revealed at a community event on May 17th. We'll be sure to keep you posted on any Call of Duty Black Ops 4 news in the coming weeks. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is scheduled to release on October 12th, 2018 on Xbox One, PS4 and PC. Regarding the community event, look to your left, look to your right. And nobody cares! If they're gonna play a Battle Royale game, they are going to play PUBG. They are going to play Fortnite. They are not 
going to play Call of Duty. They are not going to play Call of Duty because they are going to boycott it until you put a single player campaign in it. You do not ditch something that has been fundamental for those who do not want multiplayer. There are people like myself who play games for the single player story. Whether it's an R whether it's an RPG or first person shooter or in the case of sports games a career mode. I play sports games for the career mode. I don't do multiplayer. It's boneheaded decisions like this that make me not play your games anymore, Activision. Boneheaded decisions decisions like this drive your fans away. Clean up your act. Or nobody's playing Call of Duty ever again. And your biggest cash cow is going to have to be taken out back with two bullets to the head. And you're the ones to blame. You just gave Call of Duty a bad name. And it doesn't get much better, folks. And trust me, folks, it gets worse. Because EA are now on the bandwagon. Oh, boy. Bat Battlefield 5 will have a Battle Royale mode this year, says a report that comes as a surprise to absolutely nobody. And shock and surprise, no one cares. Battlefield 5 joins Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption 2. Seriously? Rockstar's on the bandwagon now? Oh, good grief. At this rate, we're going to have sports games involved in the Battle Royale mode. Oh my goodness me. If somehow sports games get involved on the... Battle Royale bandwagon. We might as well grab two of each animal and head for the border. Right. Battlefield Royale, anyone? Uh, no! It's practically the same point that I just made with Call of Duty! Or at least... That's what I would call a Battle Royale mode for Battlefield 5, which is apparently being prototyped by DICE for its next game in EA's multiplayer shooter franchise. Don't forget the single player campaign! The leaked info was shared by Venture Beast, which previously reported that DICE's shooter sequel would take place in World War II. Goody, they're going back to World War II. And comes just one day after multiple sources stated that Call of Duty Black Ops 4 would also feature a Battle Royale mode when it releases later this year. Battle Royale, as popularised by Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and Fortnite Battle Royale is a competitive PvP mode in which 100 players drop onto a shrinking, shrinking area in a last man standing fight to the death. But I'm sure you already knew that. While it may seem like DICE is riding the coattails of other games' successes, um, Activision, hello? The series is admittedly a pretty good fit for a Battle Royale mode. Hmm, with its open level design. See, this! This would work! Call of Duty does not and never will work for Battle Royale mode! Systematic gameplay and penchant for vehicular warfare perfectly catered to the genre's epic scale and competitively flavoured chaos. Players are even already used to jumping from planes and parachuting into large-scale maps in previous Battlefield games. 
So the Battle Royale framework molds itself easily into DICE's patent gameplay, patent and gameplay formula. However, it's worth noting that the Venture reports that the Venture Beat reports goes on to claim that the mode is still in the prototype phase over at DICE and has not yet been greenlit as a definite feature for the Battlefield 5, which is due to release in the fall of this year. Even if the mode does get officiated by the studio, the report suggests it won't be ready in time for the game's launch either way. Then keep it for the next instalment. Or better yet, scrap the concept, never be seen again! That said, it's... So I'm a man now. Like you? No. Not now, Kratos. I'll get to you shortly. That said, it's hard not to imagine DICE offering Battle Royale as part of a DLC pack off for pizza. If you're gonna have Battle Royale, have it included in the game! Do not have it as DLC! Or as Venture Beat predicts, a free update. Or, better yet, delay the game so you have time to put the game! Ugh. Or better yet, delay the game so you have time to get the Battle Royale mode into the game so it's available at launch, and we do not need to wait for an update! Which would make sense given that Electronic Arts is officially in damage control mode following last year's Star Wars Battlefront 2 loot box scandal. Oh, I'll get to that shortly! It's unclear when exactly EA and DICE plan to officially reveal Battlefield 5, E3, unsurprisingly, or whether the sequel to Battlefield 1 is, or, or whatever the sequel to Battlefield 1 is called. But it's highly probable that we'll know more by the time of this year's E3 Expo. Perhaps even earlier, if the studio is feeling gracious. Um, let's face it, it's EA we're talking about. Gracious is something that is not in their vocabulary. And talking of loot box scandals... Netherlands Gaming Authority cracked down on loot boxes in some of their games. Ooh, this, this subheading looks good. Four of the ten loot boxes examined in a study were found to violate Netherlands gambling laws. Electronic Arts, say goodbye to your loot box. A recent study of loot boxes in 10 video games by the Netherlands Gaming Authority has concluded that four of them are in violation of the country's gambling laws and must be changed. The regulatory body didn't reveal which games were included in the investigation. Well, confidential, confidentiality, I mean, I do even understand that. But warned that enforcement action will be taken against them if the loot boxes aren't modified to meet the legal requirements by June 20th. Take note, EA! The study revealed that four of the ten loot boxes that were studied contravene the law. The reason is that the content of these loot boxes is determined by chance and that the prizes to be won can be traded outside of the game. The prizes have market, a market value. But the report says offering these types of games of chance to Dutch consumers without a license is prohibited. Interestingly, the Gaming Authority report also appears to highlight the inadequacies of existing law in dealing with issues like loot boxes. Those games that feature a combination in, of in-game goods that can be traded uh, and the obtaining of these goods through loot boxes fall under Article 1 of the Betting and Gambling Act. Uh, as a license cannot be issued for this offering under the uh, applicable legislation, these loot boxes are prohibited in the Netherlands, it states. Huh, every day is a school day, I suppose. Six of the ten games with loot boxes that were studied do not contravene the law, 
as there is no question of in-game goods with a market value in these games. These games do not satisfy the definition of a prize in Article 1 of the Betting and Gaming Act. The study was undertaken solely to clarify the ambiguities surrounding the question of loot box prohibition, prohibitions, prohibitions in the country. But it also makes some very interesting comments on the addictiveness of loot boxes, which it said carry a moderate to high addiction risk potential. Presentation rather than the loot itself is the primary driver of addictiveness. Those on the high end of the scale have integral elements that are similar to slot machines, the report said, including unlimited access, the ability to cash out virtual goods, particular visual and sound effects, and a near miss effect that encourages the feeling of having nearly won something. Loot boxes on the lower end of the addiction risk potential scale on the other hand, are more akin to small-scale bingo. Hmm. Interesting terminology they're using here. Anyway, as a result of opening loot boxes, socially vulnerable groups such as young people could eventually be encouraged to play other games of chance. Star Wars Battlefront 2, anyone? The report warns there is currently no evidence of large-scale loot box among use among high-risk groups but the risk of gambling addiction in this group is many times higher than in adults. And what they say, and that doesn't mean, this is important to note guys, that doesn't mean that adults are, that doesn't mean that adults aren't at risk either. Adults are definitely at risk. Because, If they've got like mental health issues, they might not. And I'm I'm not I'm not saying this to I'm not saying this to degrade anybody with mental health issues at the moment because I mean, I'm in that position right now. I'm still, I'm still battling mental health issues, but I'm just it, it gets to a point where some of those people could end up trying to chase their losses. As the term goes. And the advice a lot of people are given, especially from places like Betfred, Coral, Ladbrokes, I'm just going by, I'm just going by the uh, UK scene here. Ladbrokes, Coral, Betfred, uh, who else is there? William Hill. Is it? They're the four big ones. Um, if you set yourself a limit on how much you can spend on gambling, there you go. When you hit that limit, uh, when you hit that limit, there you go. That's it. That way, you're in control and you don't end up out of pocket at the end of the day. And by out of pocket, I mean losing more than you can afford that's the last thing you can afford to do can't afford to lose more than you can afford kind of ironic that i'm actually talking about not not gambling when uh, when i literally said about um putting some money on uh, a couple of horses uh, for the scottish grand national tomorrow i mean nine times out of ten i lose but I limit them. I limit myself to one horse for the Grand National at Aintree, and one horse for the Scottish Grand National here in Air, and one for the Gold Cup as well. But I limit myself to a pound each way, which is essentially two pounds, and that's it. That's what I limit myself to, and that's it. So, there's a bit of advice for you. If you follow my advice, you'll be fine. The report succulent. Uh, succulent. Oh yeah, how do you pronounce that? Hang on.
succinctly. Succinctly, thank you very much. The report succinctly sums up the legality of loot boxes in its final section, stating, loot boxes contravene the law if the in-game goods from the loot boxes are transferable. Loot boxes do not contravene the law if the in-game goods from the loot boxes are not transferable. Hmm. I wonder. Doesn't Ultimate Team fall under this category? I guarantee you if EA didn't mess up with Battlefront 2, this wouldn't be an issue. But this is EA we're talking about. They only want the monies. But the Gaming Authority also made clear its opinion on the argument that loot boxes are not a form of gam. Right, hang on. Not a form of gambling because they always deliver some form of in-game item when they're opened. Um, technically they are because it gives you a chance to have rarer items which then encourages you to spend more to get those rarer items so technically as far as i'm concerned it is a form of gambling just accept it this argument is not valid it states the in-game goods differ and have different market values if they can be traded it is beyond doubt that the real winner is the person who wins the major valuable prize with a high market value. Exactly. That's why it's a form of gambling. If you end up getting three sevens in a row, and there you go, there's your jackpot. A recent study by market analyst Juniper Research via NOS said that the value of loot boxes and skin gambling could exceed 50 billion with a B billion dollars by 2022. That's just four years from now. It's also noted that although Steam has attempted to address the concerns in the wake of class action lawsuits in 2016, significant gambling participation continues to exist. So there's a point in it that says that loot boxes aren't a form of gambling, and yet it talks about gambling as a whole. lighter subjects now. Well, slightly better subjects. Now, Sega Ages had better include these 20 classic games or we riot. Hmm. Sega Ages. That's what it is. So classic Sega games are coming to the Nintendo Switch in the summer. So I think it's safe to see the hatchet has been buried between Nintendo and Sega after the console wars of the 90s. So I'm going to have a look I'm going to have a look at this article on GameSpot and then go through the games that somebody that some of these guys want. Okay. Sega is bringing a slate of its classic titles to Nintendo Switch during the during the Sega Fest event in Japan.
During the Sega Fest event in Japan, the publisher announced Sega Ages, a lineup of retro Sega games that are coming to North America, Europe, and Japan later this year. The first batch of Sega Ages titles will be available this summer and consist of five classic games. The Master System versions of Fantasy Star, Alex Kidd in Miracle World, the Genesis versions of Sonic the Hedgehog, and Thunder Force 4, and the arcade version of Game Ground. The Sega Ages ports have been handled by M2, the studio behind the Sega 3D Classics series on the 3DS. Hmm, wasn't even aware of that. M2 was also responsible for the Game Boy Advance line of virtual console titles on the Wii U. Sega hasn't announced an exact release date or pricing details for the Sega Ages games, but the publisher shared a handful of screenshots of them, which you can take a look at above, during the event. Sega teased that it is planning to release more than 15 games under the Sega Ages banner. In addition to the Sega Ages titles, Sega also unveiled a mini Sega Genesis during the Sega Fest event. More notably, the publisher announced Shenmue 1 and 2, a collection of the beloved Dreamcast games come to PS4, Xbox One and PC later this year. That I'm going to get into very shortly. But the Sega Ages games, let's see what people are after on the system. Right, Golden Axe, that one's kind of a given. And Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the Sega Master System version? Wow, why not the Genesis version? Oh, that would probably be later on in this one. Streets of Rage 2, why not have the entire trilogy? I mean, people prefer Streets of Rage 2, but I mean, that's kind of a good one. But anyway, Vectorman. Okay, let's keep this going, let's keep this going. Asterix. Oh, Asterix and Obelix. <laughs> Psycho Fox. Hmm. Not what I'm familiar with. The Revenge of Shinobi. Oh, yeah, Shinobi. Yeah, that's a good one. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Yes, Robotnik, not Eggman. Wonder Boy. Okay. Decap attack. Hmm. Interesting. Outrun. Okay. Well, it looks like it's a racing game, so it'll do. Fine. Right, anyway, where were we? Yeah. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, Super Fantasy Zone. Next, uh, Gunstar Heroes. Oh, that's there. Okay. okay. Shining Force 2. Again, why not have the entire Shining Force series? Um, Rent a Hero. Ooh. Hmm. I might check out Dynamite Heady. Golden Axe 2. Again, why not have the entire trilogy? Ah, Echo the Dolphin. Okay. Sonic 3 Knuckles. Again, why not have the Genesis version of Sonic 2 while we're at it? And Space Harrier 2. I have a feeling we're missing one or two games. Anyway, talking of, talking of games being added to systems, we've got uh, new games coming to the Nintendo Switch this week. Well, ah, right, here we go. The Nintendo eShop is adding a bunch of new releases this week, headlined by the arrival of South Park, the Fettered Butter. It won't be available until April 24th, though. So we've got to wait a few days. But when it drops, it will bring the first two DLC packs along with it. Danger Deck and From Dust Till Casa Bonita will be available to purchase as well. And the third expansion, Bring the Crunch, is coming later this year to all platforms. 
In addition to South Park, the Switch gets ACA Neo Geo Real Bout Fatal Fury Special. That's quite a mouthful. Phrasing, Kenzie. Phrasing. Breaks are for losers. Football Manager Touch 2018. Manticore Galaxy on Fire. Neo Atlas 1469. Party Trivia. Skelter Generations. Ski Ball. And Wild Guns Reloaded. If that wasn't enough, it also updates this week with demo versions of Skitbold, a Dodgeball Adventure Deluxe, Super Chariot, and Super One More Jump. In the next week, a few more games will be added. The Way Remastered, Fighters, the Firefighters The Simulation, Firefighters Airport Fire Department, Galgon 2, Death Road to Canada, and Where Are My Friends? The offerings are sparse, among other Nintendo platforms. Wii U gets Aqua Motor Racing Utopia and 3DS gets Cycle of Eternity Space Anomaly. In addition, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is updating with a fortune cookie shop which doles out random items. And Gulliver, a seagull who can help you get rid of unwanted clothing and furniture. Okay. So the big game there is South Park. Right. Let's see what we have here. But Pokemon Go update all the news and rumors for what's coming next. Now that the April celebration of the Kanto has come to an end, it's time to start thinking about what will come in May. It has it's been confirmed that there will be a community day celebrating the fire type starter Charmander on May 19th. Anyone who catches or evolves a Charmander will see it receive an exclusive move though it's not clear yet what the move will be. Don't forget to be on the lookout for shiny Charmanders. Read on to find out more. Da, 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 da. To find out more about changes to quests, raid battles, exclusive raids, and new gym features in the game. Ooh. So here we go. Pokemon Go has been out for a long time now, and while the app has progressed a lot in this time, just remember how unstable the servers were when it launched. There's still lots more work to be done. Some of these features are ones that developer Niantic spoke about prior to the release of the game, while others have been promised since the game's release. Trading anyone? Without further ado, here's a guide to every new update rumor, rumors as well as the tweaks promised by Niantic so far. So here we go, the new quest line. Niantic has rolled out a brand new quest system to Pokemon Go, which sees players able to embark on daily research tasks picked up from Pokestops. There's no limit on the number of tasks players will take up, but they can only pick up one research stamp per day. Excuse me. After collecting seven stamps, they secure a research breakthrough, which offers rewards such as rare candy, TMs, and encounters with legendary Pokemon. At the moment, it's still null trace. There are also special research tasks dished out by Professor Willow. These quests are more narrative. The story plays out over eight quests and will lead players towards the discovery of the mythical Mew. iPhone rules and AR upgrades. Oh, right. Though the previously announced AR Plus for iOS 11 is an exciting addition to Pokemon Go, it's bringing some bad news for Apple users on devices not able to upgrade to the latest OS. According to Niantic, an upgrade to the game rolling out on February 28th will oh, that's already, that's already happened. Will mean that Apple devices not able to support iOS 11 will be unable to cope with the upcoming improvements. These improvements will use ARKit to build on the existing AR technology in the game, but ARKit is a technology only accessible to iOS 11. What will players get? What will players get from the enhancements? Well, it'll fix Pokemon in place in the world, meaning that players will be able to go up to them and see them to scale. Having a fixed place in the world will also mean the Pokemon will be aware of a player's presence. Get too close to a wild Pokemon you want to catch and it could very well run away. An awareness meter will now appear beside wild Pokemon and if it fills up, the Pokemon will run away before you catch it. 
So if you get really good at sneaking up on Pokemon and catching them, you'll also get a special Expert Handler bonus, which will see greater XP and Stardust awards. This all sounds quite exciting. Just be aware that it's that it's when when it's in AR blah. Just but just to be aware blah. Just be aware that when in AR plus mode, battery drain is likely to be even greater than when playing in normal mode. So it might not be an all day everyday gameplay mode. In summer 2017, Pokemon Go received its biggest update since it was first released, and you can find out more about it and other incremental changes below. The weather system. <clears throat> Another significant update to the game is the addition of a dynamic weather system that, that's reflective of real world weather. The system will change things up by, for example, making certain Pokemon types more likely to appear in the weather conditions that suit them. Um, windy weather. WHY ARE THERE NO DRATINIS?! Heavy rain? Expect more water types. Heavy rain will also affect the CP of a fire type Pokemon in battle. Hmm, pleasant. And... Oh my goodness me. Right. Gym changes. Gyms are being on hold, new items are being added, and a brand new cooperative group gameplay feature called Raid Battles being in, is being introduced in the coming weeks. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. That's when gym battles were a thing. When they were just being introduced, when the rebounds were just being introduced, right? Anyway, anyway, last piece of news for today before we get into the points and trophies: Shenmue HD Collection officially coming to Xbox One, PS4, PC, and PC in 2018. The complete Shenmue trilogy is coming to PS4 and PC. Why not have it on Xbox One? You're denying the Xbox gamers a chance to play Shenmue Three. Forcing them to get it online on the PC or forcing them to get a PS4. <clears throat> With the upcoming release of Shenmue 3, Sega has finally announced a Shenmue HD collection, which will give players the chance to play through the first two games on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. The cult classic series, which first appeared on the Sega Dreamcast and then later on the original Xbox, has a strong following that praises the game for its niche gameplay mechanics rich storytelling and semi-open world structure. It has its fair share of haters due to the control scheme, tedious tasks and more, but the series has been regarded as one of the best gaming franchises ever made by several large media outlets. With all that said, a much larger audience will be able to experience the game when it moves away from the Dreamcast and OG Xbox and broadens its reach to a whole new host of massive platforms. The Sega made the announcement last night at a press con conference afterwards. All the Shenmue fans went wild. Hardly surprising. Both games will be bundled together physically and digitally for $30 on Xbox One, PS4 and PC. These games are simple ports of the old games. They're not full-blown remasters, so the graphics aren't going to be super. Right, hang on. These games are simply ports of the old games. They're not full-blown remasters, so the graphics aren't going to be super top-notch. Oh yeah, HD collection is not... Right, okay, that clears that up. That clears that. That's fine. Some new additions will be in the collection, such as updated textures and high resolutions, updated controls, time skipping, something I wish I could do with EA and Activision, and the ability to play with Japanese voiceover if you desire. Nice! Shenmue 3 is still slated to drop in the second half of 2018, so we could see this collection drop right before it releases. Possibly in the summer slash early fall. As of right now, Sega says they're only focused on these versions for the collection 
and hasn't and haven't announced any plans for the a Nintendo Switch version. The Shenmue trilogy will be available in its entirety on PS4 and PC this year. Nothing has been announced for an Xbox One version of Shenmue 3. Hmm. So you're giving the Xbox players a chance to play Shenmue 1 and 2, but you're not giving them the option to do number 3 yet. Makes no sense, does it? Now, so that's the news out of the way. Now, on to the signal. Now, on to one of my favorite parts of the show music maestro! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting, points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. <laughs> yep, points and trophies time. And today, in honor of the new God of War game coming out, I'm going through the entire trophy list. Yep, the whole thing. 37 trophies to be exact. This is gonna be fun. So here we go. Why fight it? <clears throat> right, <clears throat> I'm going through the secret trophies first. Why fight it? Fully upgrade the Blade of, Blades of Chaos. Twilight beckons. Defeat Baldur. Troubling consequences. Defeat Magni and Modi. The journey begins. Defend your home from the stranger. Round two. Rescue, rescue Artrius. Promise fulfilled. Heal Artrius. Past haunts. Ride the ship out of Helheim. Helheim. Hello, old friend. Retrieve the Blades of Chaos. Feels like home. Allow the Light Elves to return home. Dragon Slayer, defeat the Dragon of the Mountain. Death happened here. Fully explore Vaithagard. How do you pronounce it? I don't know. Vaithagard. I might be wrong. Beneath the surface, explore all the Lake of Nine has to offer. A new friend, survive with the Witch's Woods. And there are all the Bronze Secret Trophies. The, the Gold Secret Trophy is Last Wish, Spread the Ashes. Oh, um, that's not good. Worthy, fully upgrade the Levant. Now onto the regular trophies. The bronze tro the regular bronze trophies are as follows. Worthy, fully upgrade the Leviathan Axe. Trilingual, learn the languages of Muspelheim and Niflheim. Niflheim. The best moves a fully upgrade of runic attack. Obtain a uh, primordial. Obtain ancient armor set. Path of the zealot. Obtain traveler armor set. Nice moves. Obtain a runic attack gem. Enchanted. Slot an enchantment into your armor. Dwarven ingenuity. Upgrade a piece of armor. And best dressed. Craft an outfit for Artrius. The silver trophies are as follows. Unfinished business. Assist all the wayward spirits. Treasure hunter. Use treasure maps to find all, the, all of the dig spots. The truth. Read all the Jotnar shrines. Quick tempered. Fully upgrade your rage. Ion's Orchard. Fully upgrade your health. Dangerous Skies. Free all of the dragons. Curator. Collect all of the artifacts. All will fall. Kill 1,000 enemies. Like oil and the gold trophy. And the regular gold trophies are as follows. Like oil and water. Complete all of Brock and Sindri's favours. Fire and Brimstone. Complete all the trials of Muspelheim. Darkness and Fog. 
Retrieve all treasure from the workshop's center chamber. Chooser of the slain, defeat the nine Valkyries. All father blinded, kill all of Odin's ravens. And if you obtain all those trophies, you get the father and son trophy, which is the elusive platinum trophy! And that concludes the podcast for this week. Tomorrow, as always, Tom and Jerry sins. What more carnage are we going to cause? So, with that in mind, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and click the bell to join the Latter-day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. On the left, you've got Pac-Man World from yesterday. And on the right, you've got my dedicated Trophy Achievement Podcast playlist. So, I'll see you tomorrow for Tom and Jerry Sins. In the meantime, I'll see you guys again soon. Have a fantastic day. Peace out. And stay faithful.